Okay, so that was the first video that we've done. The first video was about introducing you to uh, if statement. We talked about the if, the structure of an if statement, the and and or, and the different operations that you can do with the if statement. Now, what about if we want to create a simple game? We'll, we will tell the computer to give me a number, a random number. And based on that random number, we can actually ask the user to say, guess the number that the computer gives me. And if the number that the computer selected and what I enter match, we say, perfect, you're lucky, right? That's not an easy thing, but I'll show you, all right? Let's see how it works. First, we want to ask the computer to give us a random number. Libraries, my libraries, right? There are libraries in Python that allow me packages that allow me to create random numbers. So you can say like this. We can say import. We can say import random. What does this random do? Random package allow you to create random numbers. Meaning what? The computer select that number. Sometimes it give you five, sometimes it give you six, seven, eight, whatever number that you want. All right? But you can tell it a range. So for example, if I say number equal or answer, let's say answer equal, equal, random, and then I say random, or rand int, and then I give it a range. Rand in, random dot rand integer, and I can say, give me a number between what and what, between one and ten. All right. Let me show you what happens if I do print answer just to show you. See what happens if I run it. I go back in here, console. Notice. It gave me three. The next time I run it, I get two. The next time, and it gave me a random number for the computer. Give me this number. They choose that number, not the same. It will always give me a number between one and ten. Run it again, seven. Run it again, two. Run it again, ten. Run it again, seven again. Seven again. Two, four, two, four, ten, four. You see that? So the computer decide on what number to give you. This is called random number. But when I, when I, uh, if I did not print this number, the user doesn't know what, run, what number it generated, right? Only because I'm printing it, I know the answer, okay? So now I'm gonna comment this out. We'll come back to this. We'll comment out this out. So what I want to do is that I want to ask the user to see if they enter a number. So if I say, uh, uh, this is the answer, right? Number equal, enter again, input. We're going to say enter a number between 1 and 10. One and ten, like that. Okay. After this, what do we do? We change the number to an integer. So we say number equal to int number because we need to do number comparison. Now we need to compare what you entered with what the computer have selected. So if I do this, if I say if number equal answer, means that you're lucky. You got the answer from the first time. We do this. We say print, you are lucky. You are very lucky actually. Correct, okay. This is the if. There's something called else. Means that if this is not true, we want to do something else, 
what do we say? We say else. We want to say sorry, try again. You're unlucky, right? It's not your lucky day. We can say that print. Sorry, not your lucky day. Okay, let's see how hard it is. Okay, I want you all to run it. After you do this, run it, see what happens. So I need to enter a number between what? One and 10, if I enter three, sorry, you're not lucky, not your lucky day. So the first, this is, I ran it the first time. Second time, if I run, I put, okay, maybe four. Again, no, if I put seven, Again, no. If I put eight, seven again. See, seven again. No, seven again. No, seven and again. <laughs> Never lucky, right? Seven again. No. You see that? Now that is hard to figure a number between seven and ten. So, you're, any one of you got it? Did anyone get it? Right. But it's, it's not easy, and that's how you play. When you play games, they say, guess a number. It's not easy to guess that number. But that's why I'm using seven, because a lot of people guess seven or five. But the computer is not a human. They have their own way of generating these numbers. All right? Now, how about this? If I change the range, instead of from one to, from one to 10, I'm going to say, I'm going to give me a range from one to what? Three. So the range is now smaller. Do you think my chances to win are higher or smaller? Higher, because the, the, the range of numbers is smaller, a lot smaller. Now if I run it, watch what happens. Now if I enter, um, let's see if I am lucky. <laughs> Maybe I'm not lucky, okay. Two, you are very lucky. So I got it from the first time. But if I run it again, let's say two again, sorry, right? But at least I got it from the first time. So my chances got higher to win my game. All right? So if you want to know you're lucky or not, put it from 1 to 10 and see. What about if you put from 1 to 100? It's always impossible, almost impossible to win. Okay? All right? So that is the first part. What if we want to actually give the user chance to try it three times? Says try the first time, try the second time, and try the third time. After the third time, say, <laughs> unfortunately, you're still not lucky, right? How do we tell the user to do something three times or tell the program to do something three times? How do we tell the program? What do we use? For loop, repetitions. Or there's another one called while loop in the, one of the videos Dr. Hamad put, right? So now we can try it and say we, we want the user to try it three times and see if they can actually figure it out. How do we do that? First, this is my part that I ask the user to enter values, right? I'm going to change that to from 1 to uh, 10 again. And I, this is the part. So the program generates the number only one time. But I want to give the user a chance to try it three times. How do I give the user a chance to try it three times? We do it in a loop, a repetition loop. And the one that you know is called for i n range. How many times do we want to do it? Three times from one, because it's a range with a for loop, it's one and less than four. So this is, we'll do it three times, okay? Like that. What do we want to do? We want to make everything underneath it what part of the for loop. So I need to do, if you use space, you can use space. If you want to use, I recommend using tabs. So I put tabs. So now this is part of the for loop. I put tab, tab here, tab here, and tab here. Okay. So all of this is part, belong to what? Belong to the for loop. Okay. So we will repeat this part three times. Now if we run it, 
It will do this three times regardless of what you got. The answer is right or wrong. Let's try it. Halini, first of all, I want to make it three so I have a chance to win it. Okay. So we'll make it three. All right. Again, we'll come back to it and change it to 10. Now I enter a value between one and three. So watch. If I do uh, two, sorry, try again. If I do maybe three, very lucky, correct. But still ask me, try again. Enter a number, right? Yeah, we don't, wanna, they, we don't want to say enter a number between, we want to actually, when I guess it, to exit this loop, I'm done. Okay, I'll show you how to do that. If I enter again one, it says you're unlucky, and then program terminate. Why did it do that three times? Why? Because we told it that we wanted to repeat this three times. But what happens is actually it's doing it three times regardless. But what if we want to, when we guess it right, we want to exit. We say we're done. How do we exit this thing called loop? How do we tell it you're done, you, you figured out the answer correct? You can exit. How do we tell it to do that? In programming, there is something called break. A break like that. It means what? It means this condition. If this condition is true, do this and finished. Exit the loop. Exit this for loop. And regardless how many times is left. So if you have five left, it doesn't matter. I exit. If you basically, it means that whenever you guess the answer, you finish, you exit this loop, the breakpoint. Okay. So now try it again, see what happens. If I enter one, sorry, it's not your lucky day. If I enter two, you are very lucky and it stopped. Why did it stop? Because of that the break here. We told it when, when you find the correct answer, exit, right? This is because we are asking the user to try to enter a range between one and three. What if we enter a range between one and 10? It gets much, much harder. Now let's try it. If I enter three, sorry, not your lucky day, okay, five, Sorry, you're not lucky day. Okay, maybe eight. Sorry, it's not your lucky day. So I had three times to try it, and I still didn't figure out the answer. If I run it again, the chances of getting it, okay, I'm going to try seven. Sorry, again, two, no. Eight, no. Sorry, it's not your lucky day. So you can see if it's a higher range, the chances of winning is a lot, a lot smaller. All right? I'm going to stop. Before we stop, I'll just review what we've done, okay? In this example, we've learned how to use random numbers. We import the, import the random package. This is how you use random numbers. We tell the computer to give me a number between one and 10. We've used the range, the for loop again, and we ask the user to try these things three times. We give him a chance to try this number, enter the number three times. If the first time, whenever they hit the answer, if the answer is correct, regardless how many times are left, we tell him to exit, you're done. Otherwise, it prints this message, sorry, try again. All right? I will uh, stop and put these videos for you on YouTube.